So we just had top 16. Now these guys, top eight, shooting for that top four. Let's see if they get it. From the left corner, we have Flavio. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, you could go ahead and take a seat, enjoy yourself. Uh, Flavio has a bit of problems communicating in English, not the strongest suit. Um, we don't want to pressure him or force him to do anything that he doesn't want to. We just want him to enjoy the feature match and have a good time. So now we have on the red corner, Sam. Come on in, brother. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> you seem to be a crowd favorite. Everybody enjoys having you on stage. So, man, you're going for top four. Okay, then, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling okay about it. I'm just taking each game as it comes. Um, I've, I'm feeling pretty good, though. Like, I, I know what he's playing, so I know I've got a fairly good matchup for it. So. Ah, okay, so you could kind of expect to say, like, ah, uh, I know this matchup, it's kind of under the knee. I, I, can, I can kind of, you know, grasp this already. It's fine. Ready to go? All right, you take a seat. So now these players are going to be fighting for the top four spot. So first we're going to be deciding who goes first. So we use the die. Two was thrown. Ah, oh. and a nine. So Flavio opts to go first. So to do this already. We're ready. You ready? Then off to the casters. A warm welcome from the casting team for this round as well. We're here for the top eight or the quarterfinals, if you want so. And we have a really, really good matchup coming up because we have actually one deck left in the tournament, still fighting as like a rogue pig. <laughs> and yeah. it's piloted by Sam Pearson. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, first of all, top eight is always like a uh, uh, very interesting match, I would say. He, it has a different feeling. It's Why, where, though? I mean, you have a lot of differences. First of all, our colleague Rudy uh, is going to have with you an interview. <laughs> if you're you have your picture eight. on the website already. That's a good talk. Exactly. So it's pretty cool because he's going to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. You're going to find it online on our website. Yeah. So feel free to check it out. There is a lot of good content uh, yeah, written by Rudy. So. Uh, always kudos to him, mm -hmm. but in general, I feel like it is that match where you feel like you're deep into the top cut. Yeah. So if you lose right away, top 32, not that great, but now things are getting real serious, both in terms of prices, because these guys are now fighting to have a very good chance to have the new prize card. Yeah, so. true. And also, every single one of them in top 8 with a new pricing now gets a Nintendo Switch as well. So exactly. they already secured that. But of course, they're aiming for more. Now when you're in top eight, you really can see the title, right? <laughs> you're smelling it. You really want to grab it. You want to have your hands on the trophy. And yeah. I think as players are already have prepared their decks, it is the best to go over into the match. Let's have a nice quarterfinals. Let them play now. Okay, so <laughs> as you're saying, they're both going to be uh, quite nervous probably playing yeah. in front of a lot of friends because as we could hear from the introduction, there is a lot of, of guys here supporting both. So let's see who can take it. Flavio going first, playing Sky Striker. And as you can see, we have one deck we have not yet shown, yes. Cyber Dragon Orcus. So an exciting one, really. It is. It was expected to be a little more popular, to be honest, but not a whole lot of people managed to maneuver it through the field. But Sam is the last one standing of the crew. And originally, Cyber Dragon was a really, really good deck versus Sky Striker, right? Yeah, as he said, uh, he knows what his opponent is playing and yeah. he feels like he is confident. And I do have to agree because uh, uh, Sky Striker really struggles to deal with uh, decks that spawns a lot of monsters. And when those monsters are able to just clear away your yeah. link uh, for a bigger one, then it gets tough. And it's oh, so yeah. easy for Sam to actually clear away the Shizuku in the end phase because Cyber Dragon, Mega, Mega Fleet Dragon actually yep. is so good in just removing that monster from the extra monster zone. It's one of the coolest thing about this matchup is particular or... Okay, it doesn't oh. get unlucky. I was, I was shaking for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been unfortunate if he does not hit there with the field spell. But Anchor is a pretty good pickup right there. 
Absolutely, and uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, Flavio is maining There Can Only Be One, yeah. which is a great card in general against Orcus decks, even more with Cyber Dragons because they are all machines. Absolutely. So it can really shut down his opponent. Uh, but something funny that I was telling you about is that I know Flavio uh, significantly well. He's a fellow Italian and course, he had yeah. some success uh, at previous tournaments. Uh, and he played the same card by card deck of uh, our colleague Alberto from yeah. uh, Top 32. And something that last minute, while literally in the queue to give the deck list, <laughs> they add in their extra deck the Chimera Tech Fortress we for this We see it on their list, they actually yes. crossed it through. Literally last second, they they cut the, from the deck and they were like, no, let's play the Ingirsu for mind control. That could also yes. be handy here too, because his opponent is playing Orcus cuts, but Mega Fleet would be so much better yeah. in this deck. Having it in the extra deck is so good. Like, if you're an experienced Cyber Dragon player, you can find ways to play around it, but if your opponent just has that card in the extra deck, they don't need to do anything. As long as you have Cyber Dragon monsters, they just clear your field. So yeah. I think that also yeah. scared away a lot of players from the Cyber Dragon Orcus deck, because that card in the extra deck alone is such a threat, and you don't even have to draw it, you just have that tool in the extra deck available every single time for a set Exactly. Deck. Since I'm, uh, I know them well, I was, I was telling them I didn't like that decision. Hopefully it doesn't cost him, because <laughs> when you get this far, if that oh. decision costs you a match during the Swiss, sure. It lost you, like it cost you the top eight, that yeah. got hired. Little decisions now really makes a difference, and that could be one that cost him. And I think he's still digging for that can only be one for his floodgate here. Yep. He draws with engage. He resolved two engages with draw effect. I think. Oh no, the first one was with only spell yep. two spells in grave, but the second one did good. There's another field spell. But still very impressive uh, opening here. So he got his engage engine already going. He resolved two engages in his first turn, so you can say that he did well. He can set some back rows, so that's at least potential fear for Sam. He cannot just <laughs> carefully play through everything. Absolutely. I was about to ask if you thought he was going to go for the greedy multi-role play. He thinks that double engage is better, and I do tend to agree with this. So hopefully he will not get OTK'd, which, <laughs> which is what honest, that deck does. Yeah, <laughs> it is one of the best... Uh, uh, yeah, features of uh, Cyber Dragon Orcus, so... Yeah, let's see what Sam can do here. He starts off with Cyber Emergency. And in case you don't know, that's just a free surge. Oh, and Cyber... Oh, that's instantly met yeah. by Ash Blossom. And Ash Blossom was met by Called by the Grave here. So, so already action kicking off strong here. It's top eight. They are both uh, successful and they both know what they're doing. So we're probably going to have a match where they play cards like really fast to each other as in this scenario. So Absolutely. And he went with Cyber Dragon Core. Added that to his hand. And I'm yep. kind of wondering, Cyber Emergency, actually, if that gets negated, doesn't it say you can just discard one card to actually get it back it to does, hand? It does, but unfortunately it says the activation needs to be negated, oh. so with Ash Plus okay, it doesn't okay. work. Yeah, okay. so. That works around it. True, true. Yeah. And Flavio instantly recognized that, throwing his Ash there, but it was banished by Called by the Grave. Okay. And look, he wants to take the Cyber Dragon Core, I guess, or can he? Can Let's he even see. Take it? I think he does, but I, I, it doesn't look like he is gonna go for it. So, but does it even help him? Because it could be fused away anyway on, on either player's side, and then he yep. just has a monster stuck in his main monster zone. So exactly, that's something uh, very important to mention. It does not matter where the Cyber Dragon cards are. So, oh, oh see there, he just says, "Yeah, please put away your monster. I will use it for my Mega Fleet Dragon," and there it is, conquering the field. Sam already announcing the effect, I guess, of Cyber Dragon Naxter. Yeah, one of the best addition to the deck lately. Yeah, uh, it really uh, put him to a next level, and it is one of the reasons why, for example, the deck won one of the few YCSs in Japan that we had. Completely Definitely. different format, but really shows you how good of a deck that is. So. And also that Cyber Dragon Naxter really gives you the ability to grind in some grindy matchups because it can, after turn one, when you summon Dingirsu with your Orcus engine. Then summon back the Dingirsu from the graveyard and then triggers yep. this effect. So that is really, really important. And I'm kind of hopeful to see Sam resolving these effects. Okay, at the same time, I have seen a lot better ends from this kind of deck. Yeah. It seems like it was one of the weaker ones. That's uh, true. Let's see if he can still pull this off. So It's kind of hard always for the Cyber Dragon Orcus players to really have two card combos. There are not a lot of two card combos. You usually need to have at least three cards that yep. really interact with each other. 
especially because you have to discard cards as well and so on. So that looks like basic Orcus combo from there on. And that is like something Striker can definitely take definitely apart. Definitely support, yeah. And uh, especially because Striker is like very reliant. Uh, Flavio went for the Shark Cannon last turn, knowing how important it is here. Oh, yeah. Not only is it good against the, the Orcus part of the deck, it's also good to get rid of, for example, the core. Yes. For next turn. So. Absolutely. And we see him searching for the normal and original Cyber Dragon yeah. back from Cybernetic Revolution. But it's still played, and it's still played as a 3 of, I think, right? Yeah, of course, you have to, because Absolutely. when you uh, actually resolve machine duplication or so, you always special summoning them off from the deck, and you can search for them so easily as well. You want to have the maximum of it. Yeah, to be honest, uh, we focused a lot more on uh, Luna Light Orcus throughout the event, but this was also one of the better versions of the deck. Uh, because it does, uh, just like Luna Light, uh, a lot of unfair things uh, yeah. and a lot of reading from your opponent because <laughs> most people are not really used to playing against Cyber Dragons. So Yeah, and interestingly enough, in the main event, now we only have eight players left, and there's not a single pure Orcus variant left. It's only Orcus Splash decks. For example, um, David Erpen playing the combo Thunder Dragon Orcus deck, and we see him playing Cyber Dragon Orcus tier. So the pure deck doesn't seem to perform too well at the moment. Yeah. And I do agree be with the statistics, let's say, because uh, usually the pure one uh, allows you to play more like end traps yeah. and uh, tax touches, but I feel like a, a better engine is usually the way to go. So That's true. And also what the deck, the Cyber Dragon Ox deck makes it so strong is that trap card you can play, Cybernetic Overflow, which yep. he has in hand can really just pop so many cards on the side of your opponent. You can just banish cards from your graveyard, different Cyber Dragon monsters with different levels, and uh, then you can pop cards on your opponent's side of the field up to the number of that. Yep. There you see it on the screen. And that can just take apart a whole field. Also a field of Luna Lagos Orcus, for example. If they already wanted to go through all their monsters, you just do that and yeah. you have a struggle to get Especially because it. it doesn't even target, so yeah. there's not much That's the playing best around part about it. it. Yeah. Absolutely. So now comes the Dingyasu, the card that makes the Orcus deck so, so much stronger and so versatile yeah. because it can just get the resources back from the banished pile. Even though in this particular matchup it is kind of a double-edged sword, just because uh, Sky Striker can recycle the Shark Cannon yeah. and they can get your own Dingyasu oh. and uh, start popping your own <laughs> cards. So it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting one. So, Like, Shark Cannon is such a super powerful card. It was Back in the day, it was only used to do like OTKs with Boris Watt Dragon to get like a monster from your opponent's graveyard to then be able to actually kill your opponent on that turn. But nowadays, you can special summon so many good monsters from your opponent's graveyard. For example, Pankratops as well. Then you say you can actually summon Dingyasu. Yeah. You can also summon Dingyasu in response to the effect of Skeleton in your opponent's turn, or uh, in your own turn. And then you wasted the Skeleton and you also got the value out of the Dingyasu. That's like an absolute power play. Indeed, and that's indeed. probably the reason the, the ratio of shark cannons is going up lately. Yeah, it, it went really all over the place, for even three copies yeah. sometimes, so it's... Uh, and that makes sense, It definitely. does. It's also like very important in the mirror match to get the one only yeah. copy of Kagari, so... Oh yeah, in the mirror match it's so important to try to actually get the Kagari out with the effect of Ray, so your opponent cannot special summon it with shark cannon anymore. Okay, and, and here we see the oh, cybernetic overflow, yeah. It makes sense, by the way, he was playing because he didn't destroy the multi roll with the Dingirisu. True, true. Just because he wanted to immediately use the Overflow. That way, he was guaranteed to have the Crescendo for the Engage that yeah. Flavio searched. Uh, even though I gotta say that Flavio isn't in that bad of a spot. He like, isn't, he isn't. Yeah. He has Engage and he also has that Anchor set. And that kind of baits out the Negate because if you don't Crescendo that, you do not exactly. have a monster on your side of the field anymore. <laughs> Which I, I think uh, there was a little bit of Ooh. a miscalculation here. From he lets Sam. it through. Does he have crescendo set? Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, that's really interesting. There is he just popping at them? No, it does not really I make mean, a difference. I, I think he is probably just relying on the fact that if Flavio doesn't reveal a Sky Striker card, then Galatea is gonna basically lock him. 
But I mean, he has a field spell. Ah, okay, if yeah, he doesn't reveal yeah, it with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so sure, he, sure. But at the same time, we do know that uh, Flavio is playing Dingirsu. So now Ooh. the decision making from Flavio to cut Kimeradek for oh. Dingirsu could come in handy. Yeah, that's good. Let's see, let's see. It's, it's definitely a, oh, an interesting one. Look and at there it. We see he it. is going for it. <laughs> and see yeah. Sam, he's actually surprised by that. You can see Sam smiling. He didn't expect it. Yeah. And uh, Flavio getting rewarded by it. Now he gets uh, to engage and do whatever he wants. Oh, and yes. uh, and Sam is left with nothing, really. Absolutely. Wow, what a turn of events. Uh, Flavio taking the best he can uh, for an unfavorable matchup. Yeah. And making his own cards work against him. Sam <laughs> has to fear the power of Dingisu now. But Flavio probably is eager to actually get that Dingisu off his field now because he wants to have his extra monster zone being ready for Sky Striker Link monsters. Yeah. So. So is he first? Yeah, of course. He is first of all trying to do that. Is he hitting? Oh, yep. Oh, he's hitting he is, good. He is. he is hitting good with the Ray. Very good reveal here. And uh, he's pretty much free to do whatever he wants. So. Yeah, a lot of spells in his graveyard too, so he can resolve the engage with the draw effect too, and that's what he's going to do. Do you like the he sent the crescendo to the graveyard, or uh, I mean, it was just a dead card on the field basically, and in the, yeah. in the graveyard it can do something. Yeah, so. I mean, the consideration was probably if uh, Sam uh, were to like bring it back, maybe a Galatea with the symbol, but you can always share cannon it away, so maybe. Yeah. It made more sense to keep the crescendo there. I probably. think it's close. I would have probably kept it on the field. Mm -hmm. But what kind of comeback opportunities are there for Sam? Let's see. Is he playing multiple copies of the Mega Fleet? Yeah, he's playing double yeah. Mega Fleet Dragon. Makes sense, of course, in that Cyber Dragon Orcus deck. So just top decking into Cyber Dragon would be a pretty good one, I guess. Yeah, this matchup is mostly uh, about OTKs, but now it's probably turned into a grind game and. Yeah. Flavio picked up that there can only be one, so the crying game is looking a lot more better for him now. I guess that shuts down the mega fleets and That's really all the true. shenanigans. And, and you can see Sam actually looking to the side, looking to his supporters on the rail, and being yeah. like, "Ah, oh, it doesn't look too good to me, but I'll try my best. I'll try to take it down for my country and for my deck." Basically, he decided with that Cyber Dragon Orcus deck, and he's really proud of representing it. And of course, he can't be too happy if he loses game one versus that favorable matchup of Sky Striker because after boarding, that could be even harder then. Absolutely, and uh, it's tough. It's tough, definitely. Also, because when you lose game one to Sky Striker, uh, time also <laughs> plays is, a huge it is. role. Because Sky Striker is a deck that takes a lot of time to win, but it usually takes a lot of time to lose as well. Like, you very rarely, unless you open like an Imperial Order yep. or any car like that. You tend to have a little bit of a grind game. That's so. true. You really have to have that in your mind all the time. You have to know when to actually concede a game versus Sky Striker, knowing that you don't have a chance to win it anymore because he will just outgrind you. And then that saves you time and makes you win game freeze more often versus it. Absolutely. So he's searching out the half horror with his crescendo. Yep. Let's see what he can do. Is there any way for him to come back into this? The I'm Durkin really only is probably gonna be the end of the game. Uh, if that wasn't there, maybe, maybe there was a chance, but looking very grim now. <laughs> that is true. But let's see what he picks up. <laughs> Flavio tells him, come on, yeah, draw your card. It cannot a help danger. you that much. Okay, yeah. Which would have been completely useless if Crescendo was not destroyed. Yeah, so that's actually true. Now at so least uh, it's kind of a recycle. Looks like he just banished one of his core. Yeah. Oh, he banished core, okay, yeah. That makes sense. He cannot use the banish effect to turn, he sent it to the graveyard, but now he's able to search uh, to special out the Cyber Dragon Nexter because Nexter also is a Cyber Dragon in the deck. So he can easily summon it out. And that makes him able to actually get that special summon effect from the graveyard. If Flavio wants to allow that. But that is met by there can be only one. Yeah, there can be only one. Uh, seems to be uh, way too good in here. Uh, and Yeah. Oh, look at Sam. He's yeah. oh, Okay, he's picking up he his cards. He picks up his cards. It is 1-0 for Flavio Palumbo. And he calmly picks up his, his cards as well. He knows. He is in the driver's seat now. He is up 1-0. And Sam has to do the damage now. He yeah. has to overcome the deficit. So while the guys are side-decking, let's just look into their sideboards to see yeah. what they could be bringing in. 
Uh, we got a glimpse of what Sam is siding, and I would predict him to actually go second in game two. Ooh. I think he is gonna side in evenly matched true, and twin true. twisters, and just pick second. Because the Cyber Dragon cars are really good at going second. Yeah, already. Yeah. Uh, also, on top of that, if you catch your opponent off guard and they're gonna side like more ant shops mm -hmm. or car for going second, that's really good. Because Sky Striker already kind of struggles to get into the game with only five cars. That's true. That's without true. Without Ayate, you know? Yeah, so. definitely. That Ayate effect to send your engage to the graveyard can really be the key factor. And in turn one, that's not possible, as you say. Yeah, and some interesting sighting decision on Sam's side as well. I don't think we will see that coming in, but. He's one of the few players deciding to sideboard different dimension ground. I did not see that deck in any of our feature match lists. Did you? Yeah, it's uh, definitely not common. Uh, uh, some people were using like Sanctum yeah. as another way of like a trap that stops your opponent turns entirely. But it's definitely a powerhouse, and I feel like it's one of the reasons why he got so far. Yeah. Uh, there is really not much you can do against it. Like only Red Rebute is able <laughs> to negate it. So. It's true. Like some. Thunder players actually decided on playing Macro Cosmos lately, yep. but it seems like different dimension ground can just be better because it can be chained, and if like back row removal is there, it doesn't really matter, and your different dimension Absolutely. ground still resolves. So that decision might have been key to actually bring him to this stage right here. Probably it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. And uh, if you're Flavio, you're definitely like kind of confused because uh, this wasn't one of the most expected matchups. Yeah. He's citing those mind controls. Uh, of course, they're really good, especially oh, yeah. agreed, agreed. thanks to the Dingirzu. Yes, so. yes, absolutely. What do you think about citing Gnome Material versus the deck? Because he's also sideboarding this. Not bad, but at the same time, uh, it really depends on what you think your opponent is doing. I, I do like it, so it is, it is a pretty good side deck option, uh, but it would cost him the game if Sam uh, just let him start and you open yeah. no material. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Let's see, I think it's gonna be a very interesting game uh, with a lot of uh, mind games going on on who is gonna go first, who is gonna yeah. side what, so. The mind games already started. Both players, like Flavio probably knows, uh, does not know yet, but he's guessing, he's on the guessing end at the moment, yep. and he hopes that he gets it wrong, uh, that he gets it right, of yeah. course, and Sam <laughs> hopes that he's getting it wrong, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always fun because then uh, if we get to a game three, uh, it is going to influence a lot because then if Flavio gets tricked here, is he going to try and trick <laughs> him back? Or So very, very enjoyable side of Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, let's see what happens. So Yeah, the starting hands obviously will be a key factor here. First card for Flavio is Area Zero. We see terraforming. It's a combination of both, not really what you want to see. And oh, <laughs> two I times. I think it's uh, five monsters two. for Sam, though. Well, that's definitely what you, not one you want to see with the Cyber Dragon deck as well. <laughs> yeah. And he's kind of smiling, not seeming too happy. Oh, but look, Flavio, no starters yet. He has double shark cannon, area zero, terraforming. Is there a last fifth card yeah, engage as it always card. is? Is it always <laughs> engage as a fifth card? Let's see. Flavio Let's seems. See oh, it's Gizmek Orochi okay. for Sam nice. as well. Nice uh, intro. So he's only playing the one copy of Orochi. Oh, and see, he's actually going first. He lets his opponent yeah. start. Oh, oh, and oh, Ooh. that third Ooh. card. Ray. Just at the end. Nice. All three monsters, but the third monster can be added to hand. It's Ray, and that at least secures Shiku Shizuku being on the field in the end phase. Really, really needed to pick up something, and uh, luckily it's the Ray, which is one of the better ones. Uh, you will get unengaged for the next turn and try and stay into this game. Uh, we will probably see an Oroshi here in the end phase from uh, Sam. I'm uh, surely agreeing, yeah. Unless like he's scared of banishing the one oh, skeleton. Okay. He doesn't go he doesn't. for it. Okay. But also, like, it is kind of a good thing for Sam that, that Shizuku was summoned because now he can actually use yeah. his Mega Fleet with it. So let's see. So I'm kind of worried for Flavio because we do know there is double Shark Cannon set for him. Uh, we don't have any clue on the... Oh, and there, is the, there can only be one! That card was so important! Yeah. Oh, that is a risk for Sam of going second. That's he has crazy. to fear the floodgate. And Flavio, looks like Flavio just kept in all of his yeah. going first and second cards. He's playing a 60 guard deck in game two. Because wow. he has second only be one, too. Ooh. 
crazy one here. Luckily for him, I was about to say the Salaman Great Al Mirage is gonna really save him. Yes. If he wasn't playing that card, this turn would have been completely over. Now there is a chance that he can actually go for game even, because uh, Flavio doesn't really have interruptions at the moment. Uh, let's see if he can uh, do anything. Flavio is still keeping his poker face, saying he has to think about it for a moment, saying that his face on cards might be more of an interaction point, but apparently they're not. Something that I'm kind of worried about though, because he searched for the repair plant. Couldn't he just flip the shark cannon, banishing away the core so that there was no Cyber Dragon in Grave? He couldn't have used the the spell, you know? Yeah, but did he search for Ref System? Ref System is the one special link from Grave, yeah? No, right? no, no. He searched for the repair plant. Oh, Ref Which is plant. the one that needs the Cyber Dragon oh, in Grave true, to search. True, true, true. So if he just flipped the shark cannon there, it was a useless card. That is actually right. Maybe Flavio did not actually realize that the repair plan yeah. needs that Cyber Dragon in the graveyard because that would have been a really good point. That to could have been him. a very good play from Flavio. Let's hope it doesn't cost him too much. And here I'm getting worried though. Oh, because Phoenix can yeah. come down and Phoenix will be able to take out the. There can only be one. Yep, yep. So. Oh, and that Gizmag is a nice g discard, of course, because it can be revived there. Tough one. This is going to be a lot of damage. At least uh, he is going to be able to uh, banish uh, any Orcus cards. But this might be enough uh, regardless. So That going second move could turn out well here. Oh, I'm okay. really, really worried about uh, the Shark Cannon. So. Yeah, to me it looked like he's putting the Phoenix to the graveyard as well. And now he is doing it going into the mermaid. Yeah, and it doesn't change too much, I gotta say, so... No, definitely not. Would have used it sooner or later, so now... Not much that Flavio can do. He's gonna hope that his shark cannons can keep him alive. One is gonna surely be used on this uh, Nightmare. The second one, unfortunately, could have been used on the core to prevent all of this from happening. Let's uh, see if he finds a, a good enough target for it. Yeah. What is his hand looking like now? He has still the cybernetic overflow left in his hand. That can be a key yeah. part of winning him this duel if he does not actually OTK here. Yeah, it is a pretty good way to just uh, save uh, a turn that's gone co terribly wrong. Well, yeah, yeah. I feel like this is going to be a turning point because uh, it's, it's going to be close, to be fair. Uh, if uh, Sam has enough to OTK, then uh, sure. If he doesn't, there, there will be an engage for free, which means you just get a lot of advantage back. Yeah, but I mean, he still has that overflow, so that maybe has Flavio searching for jamming waves or so to bait that out first. So he has to play around it somehow. That could actually be yeah. hard for him to then get the control completely. So Galatea comes down, oh, the shark how much, cannon. How much attack is that already? That's, uh, a That's pretty already impressive. a lot. Yeah. He's definitely over 6,000 damage, and it will be close for Flavio. It's like 6,300 at the moment, yeah. plus the buff from the Nightmare, yeah, which true. is uh, probably going to be 400. So he's uh, not that much short. And there's also Gizmek Orochi still in the graveyard, but that will be met by the Shark Cannon, probably. But this uh, seems like it could be just enough uh, uh, for Flavio to stay alive, because if he banishes that, uh, he cannot summon the other Galaxy Soldier. He's now locked under Dark Monsters, so... Yeah, that is true, as he starts to go yeah. into his awkward combos. Okay, so Sam is like, one of the shark cannons is fine, because I still have my Gizmag in the graveyard, and then it's still enough damage. Exactly, which means that now, uh, unfortunately, this is uh, pretty much enough. So, I'm very well played here by Sam. He can force the shark cannon. It's going to be oh, used on the Orochi. Yeah. Orochi is summoned, and this is enough uh, for Sam to just win the game here. It is indeed. Look, Flav, you're reading the Gizmek for a second. Yeah. And Seems like we're going to see a game three very oh, soon. Oh, yeah, and I love it. <laughs> Look, Flavio, really, yeah. really eager Flavio to banish this card. <laughs> trying to banish it, but Sam is not sleeping. He changed no. it, and this is going to be enough damage. We're there going you to see a game him. three. Oh, yeah, he just tickles wow. the card saying, attack, 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 attack. And we have a game three nice. lining up for you nice. guys. Nice. Oh. Nice turn out of events. It was a very close one. I'm still really worried about Flavio. If he just fought a little bit more and used the shark cannon on the core, then it could have been a completely different uh, 
game. But now we go back to <laughs> the side decks. <laughs> back to the drawing board, basically. Yeah. Now the mind games are on. Exactly. Is so. it going first for Flavio? Is it going second? What is your prediction? Uh, you gotta be confused because in game one you went first yeah. and it worked out. Yeah. Now your opponent literally just let you start <laughs> and it didn't work Absolutely out. Absolutely not. But I mean, uh, as a fair point, his hand wasn't that strong. So maybe Flavio just hopes to go first and have a stronger starting hand. I agree. I agree, but he probably is gonna stick to his uh, his instinct. Uh, but at the same time, I really don't mind his side decks. Like he has Lancia, No Material, Nibiru, and Mind Controls, which are all cards that potentially can shut down the entire deck from Sam. Yeah. And if Sam is still gonna keep in cards like Evenly Matched and Twin Twisters, then you really don't want to open those either. So that's right. And what is? the most that Sam can actually do if he has to go first? What is like his biggest board he can create? There? He can do some pretty uh, nasty things, let's <laughs> say. Usually uh, the best ending board is the full uh, Orcus uh, shenanigans, mm -hmm. and on top of that you have Infinity true, and true. the Cybernetic Overflow. So yeah. pretty impressive, to be fair. And that's right, yeah. It's pretty all right, and Striker will struggle to play through it, but yeah. If a deck can do it, that's most likely Sky Striker because they can take apart boards a little easier than other decks. Yeah, something I really don't like, and I hope it was just um, smoke siding, is that I saw Sam uh, siding in the Drawn and Lock Birds. <laughs> I'm not a fan of those against Sky Striker. Like, sure, it can work out, but it's very gimmicky. Yeah. Maybe it does work out if you use it as a kind of a like threatening roar. You drop it and then you OTK. Exact, exactly, that's yeah. what I was thinking. You just stop your opponent's turn and then you can have all the resources you need and just yeah. go for the full swing. So I can see that working out actually. Uh. I wouldn't be too surprised, but that would mean that you're you're going just all in. second, yeah. right? And you're all in as well. And yeah. if you go first, it's just a pretty yeah. bad card. And if card you go in first, hands. you open draw like in Sky Striker, that's not going to be fun. Yeah? Absolutely not, yeah. So let's see. And I did see Flavio side in Nibiru, so maybe there is a chance that he just mind game his opponent once more <laughs> and let him start. So I'm, I will really enjoy that. I'm kind of with you on that side. I, I actually hope that Flavio is going second here because Same. I think that would be the correct decision. And as they have their opponent stack in their hands now, they already can tell who's going first, and it looked it like Flavio actually to this. Just, yeah. just pointed over to him. I'm pretty sure Flavio let him start, and he drew the draw and the oh. twister, which are completely useless going first. And we see the hand of Is Flavio. Is he an entire too. brick? Uh, I, no, okay, he has the cyber. Yeah. So if that resolves, then he has at least a decent opening, but that's the only good card he has in his hand at the moment. So yeah. if, for example, an Ash comes down. We predicted it. Yeah. He actually has to go first with that draw and lock board in hand. And Flavio's end is actually amazing. He has Engage, uh, Ray, Multirol, oh, like yeah. it's such a good end. And also that can only be one is in his hand as well. That's the fifth card our yeah. screen does not want to show as in the last game. But he has oh, that as well. He's going oh, he gets first. Uh, that changes everything completely. Why? Yeah. I was pretty sure he would have gone second, yeah. and now this can actually come back to hurt him because going second against Twin Twister, machine duplication and draw and lock. I yeah. really don't understand why he went first again. Aye, aye, aye. But he does have, there can only be one. But then yeah. there's Twin Twister on the other side. Wow, I'm getting scared here. Also, he could have prevented this, but mm, getting <laughs> shaky. I'm getting we, uh, worried about it. We thought that that roll and lockbird will really hurt Sam, yeah. but at the moment it looks like it could really, really favor him, and he was really happy to see it in his starting hand. Absolutely, and uh, wow. <laughs> I really didn't expect this uh, to turn out uh, the way it is. Yeah. And look at Flavio, he's kind of surprised by Drone Lockbird as well, because that card in total went down in popularity lately too, because there's no really yeah. super good deck I to play think, it. I uh, think a cool move that he's probably doing is keeping Ray on the field, so that it, it cannot be used as a material, and then you can use it for Kaina, yeah. just to not get OTK'd. So I think uh, Flavio is playing very well here. Absolutely, yeah. He and cannot... Now. Okay, he goes for it now. I'm really surprised by that, because that could have been a response. What? What? Okay. Why is he doing that? That's not really yeah, making I'm too much sense to me, because he could have then uh, actually used that as a what? response, as you say, to actually play around yeah. uh, the attack of your opponents. And now he's fully playing into the Mega Fleet Dragon, too. But maybe his plan is to actually now turn up the that can only be one he has set down, and then your opponent cannot yeah. do it anymore. But I mean, you can always 
do it later as just as well as flipping the share cannons and widow anchor in response so i'm not completely sure why he went for that yeah he probably has his reasons he has his game plan worked out and now we're gonna see the machine duplication uh, play a huge role i guess so Flavio had no interruption for that search of cyber yeah. emergency. So the machine duplication is going to come down. There can only be one is there, okay. but the twin twister can meet him. So Yep. Wow. Sam just putting it in his zone. There can be no impermanence in. And what is he going to hit with it? What is the best now? Do you want to hit the Widow the Angle or do you want to hit the Shark Cannon? Oh, he hit sure. the Shark Cannon. That's also okay. fine. That's also fine. It's the Shark Cannon. Wanted to hit the Widow Anchor he don't, but now the machine duplication is there. And the machine duplication will just resolve. Yeah. Brutal, and brutal. Sam thinking about it. What does happen if you just widow anchor the core now? I think it would still resolve. It doesn't resolve, do right? much, yeah. And the worst case scenario, I mean, <laughs> even if it did negate that part, you could just summon two more, which is just as good. And this is looking tough. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Two cyber dragons hitting the field. Even the old fashioned monster reborn in end to push some <laughs> additional damage. I really don't understand why he went for the the play with the um, ray there. Yeah, that really seems odd. There's his Cyber Dragon Nova coming down. Yeah. Oh, and he also summons Mega Fleet there. He's gonna chain uh, potentially a negation, so let's see what he wants to do here. I mean, you actually have to use your Widow Anchor now because otherwise the Infinity comes down yeah. and you're not going to be negating anything if that infinity yeah, is Yeah, luckily for him, he cannot go directly for infinity because his zone is uh, locked. Oh, you're right, you're right. So he needs a way to, to find it here. And Flavio uh, keeps with his uh, Oh, with monster his reborn. Okay. Ray. He takes the ray, interesting. Okay, he, he just okay. needed the monster and he wants to take the ray yeah. to his graveyard as well. So he wants to make space for the infinity, of course. And does he have cards in hand left to actually resolve the Orcus combo? Unfortunately, I think like this is going to be completely over if he doesn't mess this up. He knows that the last card set is in the engage. This, as long as he has another Nightmare in his deck, uh, should be a lot of... Yeah, and there is the Nightmare. So he should be able to actually get out a monster Big Absolutely. enough to swing with the Cyber Dragon Infinity. Very, very tough line of plays here, and uh, gotta give credit to both. Uh, uh, this game three more than the others really came down to uh, the sequence of cards they've been playing, but both show that they know what they're doing, and uh, uh, you gotta give credit to Sam because his deck yes, is the one yes. that's not really popular, but. And also making the decision of playing the Joel and Lockbird, which really, really helped them here because. Yeah. If Flavio could have resolved multiple engagements this turn, he would have had more points of interruption. He would have had another anchor, for example. Yeah, he can easily OTK here, just going for uh, the Boris Ward potentially. Yeah. So let's see what he wants to do. That just screams Boris Ward OTK to me, to be honest. Yeah, and maybe he doesn't. He has even enough damage just going uh, for like long gears. <laughs> just attack, attack, attack with all your monsters, right? Yeah, probably just even long gear suiting gears two could be enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, I do agree. There is I hope it is, uh, without doing calculations, <laughs> because if it's not, then... Uh, I'm pretty sure Sam has already worked that out in his head. And he is now summoning the Dingyasu. And yeah, that should be enough damage. Yeah. Look, is, is Sam just... Okay, he even clears out the engage. No back row cards there anymore yeah. for Flavio. The way is free. And there is the first attack. Second attack. Third attack. Just doing some calculations. I mean, I don't think it would matter too much, to be fair. Because even if this was in game, then... I mean, it would be a shame, because like, <laughs> it was like easy. He could have had game. Yeah, yeah. But, that's but there is the handshake, and, and look at down. Sam celebrating all wow. the uh, British Sam people. moves on to the clapping. top four. Wow. That wow. was it's such an insane, incredible, intense match. Uh, incredible match. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's great. Like ever since uh, the old top card, we have a lot of emotions going yeah. through. It, it, it all comes down to this. Even if this is the first YCF of the season, you can see the players are already mm -hmm. like ready and, and they I mean, want to fight. So if, if you just win this YCS now all of a sudden and you weren't really prepared for it, then you're in contention for the world's race. Yeah, 
<laughs> like it's you didn't even plan for it, but if you win the first YC of the season, then you're basically you gotta forced into it, it right? Yeah. yeah, at least you surely you gotta consider it. it. And uh, yeah, it was an incredible match. They yes. both put up a fight. Uh, I feel like at the end it comes down to uh, really their mind games because in game yeah. one, uh, Flavio didn't really care about the matchup. Mm -hmm. He stick to what he was comfortable with. Went first. And overall, it worked out. I don't sure. feel like uh, he was under too much pressure. The I do agree. Game. I do agree. Game two, though, uh, Flavio and Sam. <laughs> that completely yes. changed. <laughs> it changed a lot. Here we start to see the mind games. Sam goes second completely destroys his opponent. And he did not even draw any of his sideboard cards in game exactly. two. He just, his deck is designed to go second to throw out OTKs. And it was so good back in the days when Sky Striker was really, really powerful because yeah. it had a very good Sky Striker matchup. And I gotta admit, like, if in game one we could have some doubts on the statement uh, from Sam uh, before the match, uh, yeah. the other games really proved that this is a good matchup mm -hmm. for him. And uh, it is not uh, by chance that he is in the top four. <laughs> absolutely uh, not. Really good chances to even take the tournament, to be fair. So, absolutely, absolutely. Again, uh, you gotta give credit to Flavio as well. Uh, he went all sure, the way sure. once more to a really good finish. So one day he's very young. I'm sure he will. Uh, make uh, Italy and all of us proud so <laughs> he's still eager to get his win yeah and he has time for it definitely exactly. definitely but and I mean he will be happy taking down a Nintendo Switch yeah, and can't that complain. top eight I mean you come home to your country and you're like the guy top eighting for your country so you still exactly. are like the hot stop the hot spot at the moment yeah, right and you still get a lot of points so if yeah, he wants yeah, yeah. and uh, take it more definitely. seriously to try and go to the world championship he can Anyway, this was a great match. We still have two very important matches to find out the winner. The most important ones are still left, guys. Exactly. So definitely keep watching. Keep watching. Thank you again for tuning in. Yes. We do have JJ with our winner, Sam, ready. So let's just go to them and thank you again. Wow, Sam, man. How, how's it going? Good. Um, I'm obviously really, really happy to be in top four, of, like my first ever YCS top. So, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, as as I said before, I'm just taking it every game as it goes, and you know, just hoping that I can keep going. And yeah, playing one of the unexpected decks of the series, man, Cyber Dragon. That is crazy. What what made you think of hey, you know what, Cyber Dragon seems all right. So, uh, I. But since the regional starts in America, there's a guy called Edception who he started playing Cyber Dragon Orcus, and I've I've been a huge fan of Cyber Dragons most of my like my Yu-Gi-Oh life. So I just thought I'd try it out, and it did really really well um, in testing. And I feel like the decks that I was expecting to see a lot of going into this weekend was Striker, Salad, Thunder Dragon, uh, Cyber Dragon, Lunar Light Orcus, and regular Orcus. All of those have just Cyber Dragon's got a great matchup against, and I've been testing against Thunder Dragons, which I know are still in it and are you know around, and it's got a fairly good matchup against that as well. So I'm just you know I'm just hoping it continues. And I mean, it does have a, a good uh, matchup against Striker because of Mega Fleet, of course. You know, getting rid of the Shizuku or Kagari, I think, without having the rib being able to trigger or anything, is really important in a grand game if you're trying to grind them out of resources. Do you think that it's something where if any other Cyber Dragon player would probably think, hey, do you have any tips for those guys who probably want to consider picking up this deck? Uh, I think you just, yeah, so Mega Fleet is obviously a great card. Um, it's pretty much what won me the game against um, uh, Flavio just then. And yeah, it's just stupid. It's ridiculously good. And yeah, I'm just happy that it's, it's a shame that it's a double edged sword. Like, I know that a lot of people wanted Mega Fleets on the Friday so they could just side it in and get a free win against this deck. But for some reason, I didn't see much of this deck here. But I know in the uh, YCS Niagara Falls, top tables is just saturated with it. So I, I guess people were prepared for it here, and it didn't work out. And over in America, it's just running wild. OK, so more or less, you can kind of say, you know, their, their format or where they went to the top tables spilled out a little bit over into you. And it's more or less everybody's support and give you a little bit of energy, you know? Uh, I mean, I wasn't expecting to do as well as I have done here. I mean, obviously, I'm really happy with it. Um, but I was expecting more than just me being Cyber Dragon Orchest in Top Cut because the deck's amazing. And I know that lots of people, like, it's a very popular deck. It's got a huge historic fan base. And you know, there's huge, loads of groups on Facebook where they talk about it. And 
they're, they're massive. So I'm just surprised that I didn't see anyone else really playing it on top tables at all here. It's just, it just didn't make sense. So you can say you're crazy of not shutting this deck at all. And he proved everybody, all the naysayers. Um, and it's so hyped to see him, and I wish you all the luck. Do you have any like last words or shout outs or anybody you wanted to say? Shout outs, obviously, to the Disciples, uh, Brotherhood, and Mike. Uh, I wouldn't be here without you guys. And Edeception for actually like making the deck competitive and giving me a base point. And yeah, it's good. Thanks, guys. So that's it for us for top four. Coming up really soon after this.